Hey guys, Ariel and Burley over here, not at finest at the moment. It is a gorgeous sunny day, which we have not had very many of this winter because it's been snowing every day. Anyway, so the sunshine and bright blue skies with only a couple of wisps of clouds are pretty spectacular. Might even get a bit of a sunburn if I stay out here long enough. It's still cold. It's like 17. Um, it was a little below zero again last night, but if you're in the sun and out of any breeze, it feels pretty good. So we are on a just a lane that goes into the forest. It uh, is packed from sled traffic and so on. And there is one private ranch down it, so they do some plowing, but none of the uh, public can drive in here. Um, check out these white covered cliffs up there and just over those edges you can see the cornices where the snow has kind of wind loaded over the lips. But it's a pretty day. Barely gets to just run back and forth and check everything out and smell everything. And in a minute here, I'll show you a little bit of what we're doing to practice new skills. That snow is deep, but it's got enough of a crust. He can pretty well stay on top now. So again, I'm carrying my little backpack with all of my normal stuff, for those of you who are going to ask about that. But um, got first aid supplies and things like knives and lighters and emergency blankets and uh, bear spray and all of that. Because we are a little ways away from the house, we actually drove just a few miles to get here and we're alongside, there's actually a creek down there. Not that you can tell, it's completely snowed over with a few fox tracks and such crossing the snow drifts. But uh, those willowy areas down in there that's the kind of places moose like to hang out. Haven't seen one yet, uh, but there was one sleeping right beside the front door when I first woke up and peed this morning. So, it's a, just a gorgeous day out here. Let's work on some of the things we're practicing. Hey, Burley, come here, good boy. Come here. Can you sit? Good boy. High five? Oh, good job. Good boy. Okay, let's go. Stay. Good boy. Good stay. Good boy. Good stay. Good stay. This is a new one we've been practicing. Good stay. And he's gotten pretty good at... Okay, come here. Good boy. Good baby. Good puppy. Okay, let's go. And we've just basically been teaching these things by just showing him what I want, which often for something totally new just involves, you know, letting him follow my hand with a treat in it with his nose. You know, that's how I taught him to sit or to lay down, just got his nose to follow the treat in my hand. Kind of like this. Let me see if I can show you. Come here, baby. Good boy. So I've got a treat. Sit. See, his head would naturally have to come up. Good boy. And for something else, down. He already knows so he goes down. Good boy, that was good. You did it. He follows my hand down. Stay. So then stays and things like that, we've just been, good boy, good stay. We've just been working on, if he started to move, I just told him that wasn't what I wanted. And he pretty well, good stay. Ah, uh -uh. good boy. See, he knows, uh, he knows that's not what I want. And once he, it, it sometimes, you know, is confused a little bit at first what I'm asking him for, and that's just fine. Okay, come here, good boy. But once he gets it, which he usually does after a few tries, um, he knows what I want and he's really good at it. He always, always seems a little excited when he first figures it out, like, oh, oh, that's what you meant. Cool, I can do that, watch me. So it's fun. It's, uh, I'm not a professional dog trainer. I've had dogs, raised dogs, trained some of them, showed them since I was like 12, 11, 12, I forget how old it was when I got my first dog. But in my experience with, especially if you're starting with a puppy who are generally, there's somebody's got a, a ski track that went out across the willows there. 
generally puppies, you know, if you start out with any kind of a decent relationship with a puppy, they want to do whatever you want and make you happy. So all you have to do is be able to clearly show them what that is because a puppy is not a person and doesn't necessarily read your mind. So you just have to figure out a way to show them what you're wanting them to do. And then they're usually really excited that they get to do it and it makes you happy. Good boy. Can you sit? Should we do another high five? Good boy. Good boy. Okay. Let's go. Um, and for treats uh, while training, I usually use uh, homemade ones. I'll actually do a video on how I make those really super quick and easy and inexpensive, and that's why I do it. And most dogs love them. Anyway, so... Yeah, that's how we've been practicing different things. And just while we're walking or running or working or shoveling snow or doing things in the house or whatever, we just randomly practice things. And so he's gotten pretty good at all the ones we've been practicing. You know, of course, sits it downs. Um, he learned a long time ago and high fives. Uh, so those he's been flawless at for a while. Stay is a newer one but like I said we did it a few times and once he realized what I what I meant then he was all excited about oh look I can do this watch me just plop and not move um recalls coming back to me of course we've been working on that from day one um we do a dance thing where he hops up and gives me both hands but I can't do that while I'm holding the camera uh, we're working on still on shake, which I teach high five as the, you know, put your paw up for somebody and shake as, you know, shake all the snow or water off your fur just because I've found <laughs> that's a useful command. Um, kind of like that little motion you did right there. So I've been working on that. Rollovers. He's been a challenge with them. He gets so excited about learning new things. He will roll over happily and he loves belly scratches, but when he knows we're, we're practicing something, he's so excited. He has a hard time following my hand with the treat and actually doing it. He actually leaps up to uh, be alert and ready. So we're still working on rollovers. That's just for fun, no real reason he has to know that. Um, he knows, oh, he's pretty good at weight, really. Good boy. Okay, like if we ever was a car coming or a snowmobile, we're gonna just wait. Good boy. Good wait. He's pretty good at this. Just hang out beside me and we let the snowmobile or whatever go past us. Good boy. Good boy. That's a good wait. Good boy. Okay. Um, and I've just used okay as my release word. You can really use any kind of word you like. I mean, you can say bamboozle when you want your dog to sit down or whatever as long as you use the same thing every time they don't know the difference and okay is a handy one for me because I don't I don't say it as just a single command in the process of other things very much so he knows that I'm talking to him and let's see what else do you know well he knows how to fetch firewood and he knows how to use beep beep if he's uh, exactly where I need to be. Beep beep means move your butt somewhere else because I need to occupy the space you're in. I don't care where you go. So when we're working together, shoveling snow and stuff, we use that command some. Um, we've been working a little bit. He loves to fetch. I'll show you that in a bit, minute here. Um, and so we've been working a little bit on voice commands for directions. So if he doesn't see where I throw a stick or something, being able to direct him to go further out, you know, turn around, go to one side or the other. Um, he's getting pretty good at that. Usually if we lose a stick, it's because I hung it up in something when I threw it, not because he couldn't find it. Um, let's see here. Oh, he knows leave it and drop it, which are fairly self-explanatory. Um, he knows go get it. Um, let's see if he'll do catch it. Here, baby boy. Good boy. Good boy, can you catch it? Catch it? Oh, almost. That was a little too big. Let's try a smaller snowball. Can you catch it? Good job. Good baby boy. And he is, you're such a good puppy. You are. Good boy. 
he, uh, he loves eating snowballs. <laughs> and he's so excited uh, by praise, uh, dogs in general, but especially English Shepherds really tend to be close to their people. You can see how he checks in with me all the time, so he just likes being praised to death too. He doesn't get a treat every single time we do something, but they are useful for, like I said, kind of directing um, movement to show what I mean. Because a puppy doesn't understand English and doesn't know what I mean unless I can figure out a way to show him. As you probably noticed, most of the time, go away. He uh, spends a lot of time checking in to be sure he knows what I'm doing and thinking. Um, you know, most places we go, he can be off leash, which is partly why we've spent a lot of time practicing some of these commands so that we can do that safely, even though most of the time we're in spots with very few other humans and so on. But he loves racing through the snow. Can't always tell where my camera's pointed. The um, sunlight is so bright out here that it's really hard to see at the moment. But I am very much enjoying the sunshine. You can see how he likes to range back and forth and just check out everything. He can see he's up on the snowbank over my head, back to my side. Let's see if I slow down if he'll get ahead of me. Hold on, baby boy. Good boy. Good boy. He's very responsive to that. If he's getting too far ahead, good boy. To waiting on me. Sometimes he comes back and sometimes he just stops. Either one is totally fine. That's not a recall. That's just telling him to wait for me and not go too far ahead. Um, and I want him to get ahead so I can recall him. Of course, he's not going to do it. He's going to stick right beside me. Good boy. Good boy. And we've, I've just taught him from the start that um, being whistled for means come, come the whole way. Good boy. Come the whole way here and sit and let me pet you. Okay. You know, so that he's used to not just coming generally in my direction, but in case I, we had something going wrong or some kind of emergency and I needed to get a hold of him, he comes right up to me and sits and lets me pet his neck, which could be grab his collar. Because you may notice that a normal tendency is, you know, for a dog to come when called um, and get in your vicinity, but then if you reach for him to grab him, they, they kind of bolt away again, because that can be a pretty normal dog reaction. So he just gets right up to me, sit, pet his collar, and praise the hell out of him, and off he goes again. So he knows that 98% of the time, that just means you get praised and get a treat maybe, and go back about your business. Not like every time you're called, it's the end of everything fun that you're doing. It's another cool one. We've been teaching him, and he's pretty good at, hey, Bradley, Bradley, listen. All I want him to do when I say listen is to just stop moving and making any noise so that we can both hear whatever. There's nothing in particular to listen for at that moment. Um, but he's pretty good at that. I love how he pops up to look over that snowbank. Down in there you can actually see a tiny little bit of open water opening up in the sunshine. But it's mostly still snowed in. He still gets his ears flipped inside out sometimes, which I think is hilarious. Doesn't seem to bother him at all. I think it would feel weird if I had ears like that. Good boy. Good boy. That's a good fairly. Good fairly. Good boy. Good boy. Good baby. Okay. So again, this is, I'm not a professional trainer. This is, I know back when I got my first dog, I read a bunch of books on dog training, but that was so long ago. I honestly have no idea even which ones they were or who wrote them or anything. 
but this is just the things that have always worked for me in my life um, to basically like so I know somebody said you know it's a dog is not a little person they're a dog and it's not fair to put a dog in your house and not what do you smell who you smell something somebody else walk there I bet they did it's not fair to have a dog in your house and expect them to know the rules if nobody ever tells them what the house rules are. So I just tried to be clear um, with showing him what I want in a way that a dog could understand. Sometimes that's the most challenging part, figuring out how to show him. And other than that, um, you know, unless it's something I know he knows really well and is, is intentionally disobeying, he doesn't really get in trouble. But we also do a lot of talking like this the whole time we're walking about how he is such a pretty dog. He's just the prettiest puppy in the world and the best mountain snow puppy ever. And so if he does something that's not acceptable, my tone of voice changes and uh, he's very aware that he is in trouble. He usually promptly lays down with his nose on his paws and looks very pathetic. Like, I'm really, really sorry. I didn't mean to. I'll never do it again. And usually only needs to do that once or twice and he doesn't do it again. <laughs> Where the snowbank is deep. That's not the camera angle. That's how many feet above my head he is. <laughs> Quick baby, I can't keep up with you. I can't. Good boy. That's one I just use when I mean pay attention. Like we're changing speeds, we're gonna go from a walk to a run or back, or changing directions. I'm turning a corner, we're turning around, or something of the kind. So he just knows to check in when I do that and see what's different. Let's see if I can show you how I start with training something totally new that we have never done before. And you may notice he does lift his leg and pee on things. He is a dog um, and I live in a place where that is not realistically a problem in the normal course of things. You know, of course, peeing on a person or something, you know, a person's leg would not be acceptable, but if a coyote peed on a bush and he wants to pee on it too, that is perfectly fine. So in general, my rule of thumb is if it's a natural dog behavior and it doesn't cause any kind of uh, safety issue for either him or me or other people, um, then he's allowed to do it. You can certainly train a dog not to do that. I just have never seen any point to try to prevent him from being a natural dog in that area. Here, I gotta get you in front of me a little bit so we can practice something new. I know, you stay right beside me, just back and forth. You're so good. You are. You are. Hey, Burley, sit. Sit. Good boy. We haven't really worked yet on, on sitting remotely or stopping. You know, he's always done it right beside me. Let's try this. Come here. Okay. Good boy. Sit. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Stay. No, no, that's, that's not sit. That's down. Sit. Good boy. Good sit. Good boy. Stay. Oh, yeah, yawn. It's so boring to stay. Good stay. Good stay. And we just practice this under all kinds of circumstances. Good stay. And see, he knows the whole time from my voice I'm happy with him. Good stay. Good stay. And we practice going away. Good stay. And coming back. Good boy. Okay, come here. Good boy. Good puppy. Good puppy. Good boy. Yeah, I love you. So commands like that, um, which we'll do more practicing on, that's really the first time I've ever asked him to, you know, stop part way toward me, uh, will be useful to know in case you ever have an incident where there's something dangerous between him and me. I don't want him to actually come straight back to me. I want him to stop and sit or lay down exactly where he is and not move. Um, but like I said, as, as soon as he understands what I want, he's very, very good at that. 
Well, again, most dogs are born wanting to make their people happy, especially breeds like him and a lot of other highly intelligent ones that have spent, you know, centuries being selected for animals that have a tendency to be very responsive to working with people. That's partly why English Shepherds make such a wonderful all-around farm dog, because they can herd, they can hunt, they can be a companion, they can watch the kids, they can kill varmints, they can protect the chickens, and they're just, that's it's even in the breed standard that they I forget exactly how it's worded, but something about being um, very responsive to working with people because that was a very big part of their job description. So, like that. You can see even just the whole time we're walking and talking, he's always checking in. Let's we'll see if we can duplicate that little trick again. Well, it's probably not fair to ask him to do that while he's on top of the kind of steep bank. That's confusing when you're trying to learn something new. Again, look at the beautiful scenery here. Getting a few more wispy clouds blowing in as we walk, but check out the green hill trees on the north side of the hills. That's because there's more moisture there. because it's, uh, The snow tends to load into there earlier and stay longer than on the southern sides of the hills, which are more sunny. Hey, Burley. Really? Oh, dig? Dig? Oh, yeah, we've been working on that. I want to teach him to dig on command, mostly so... Go ahead, dig. Go ahead, dig. Mostly so I can tell him to not dig if he's uh, wanting to do that in a place that is inappropriate, like the veggie garden. You're so good. Hey, Burley. Sit. Uh, not the whole way to me. Sit. Good boy. See, I can't get a treat to him nearly as fast as I can get my voice to him. Good boy. Lay down. Really? Down? Uh-uh. Good boy. So I can correct instantly with my voice if he's confused about what I'm wanting. Good boy. <laughs> he looks so pathetic to me when he does that. Good boy. Um, but I can correct or praise instantly with my voice to try to get as close to the things he does as possible. That's such a good boy. Good stay. Good stay. Good boy. Good stay. Okay, come here. Good puppy. Good boy. Good boy. And then he can get a treat too, but I can't always get a treat to him instantly, but I can instantly let him know with my voice that that is or is not what we're trying to do. You can see a few spots there, but definitely in that closest one, that would be kind of a mini avalanche. It's not really an avalanche that being that little, but the same thing on a bigger scale, on a bigger hill would start a really serious avalanche. It's just a slough where some loose snow started rolling off that cornice and rolled those big snowballs down to where the gully kind of flattened out there in the gut of it. You can see on up through there, that happened in multiple places. And again, if you just take more snow and a bigger, steeper hill, you can get the kind of avalanches that kill people, snap trees off, all of that kind of thing. Now we've turned around and we're headed back the other direction. Um, there is some more clouds rolling in, so it's not quite as bright sunshiny as it was, but this is going to be about a, oh, six mile walk. We came about three miles out before turning around, and now we're headed back. I know people are going to ask about his feet and the snow. Um, English Shepherds were bred to work outdoors in the cold and snow. I'll probably do a whole video on their history at some point. Pardon me, I get a little out of breath when I'm not running the camera. We, we take a turn of running for a stretch, but that's too hard to do while recording, so I'm walking again. Anyway, um, he's got a lot of feathering over his toes and seems to stay quite warm. His feet are always warm when I touch them. He appears to be comfortable. And as far as 
snowballs. You're such a goofball. <laughs> Packing in between his toes. I think that's way more of an issue when your snow is warmer. When it's minus two overnight and your high is 17 during the day, everything is just so dry and powdery. It doesn't stick to, you know, my boots. It doesn't stick to his feet or anything of the kind. Um, one day we did have a bit of a warm up uh, and hi baby um he did get a little bit of snowballs between his toes then i do have some musher secret and we did use it that day but most of the time it's just not needed Boy. one of the ways you can see how excited he is we have stayed very focused on me during his walks you can see how excited he is. He's by playing Fat 20. You awesome guys bought this for us and he loves it. It's easy to throw. It bounces really fun. It rolls really fun. If Good boy. Good boy. I tried to get away from you. Good job. Good job. I usually throw behind me so he can run behind me and then I'm already walking away as he comes back with it. But anyway, he loves this thing and it's pretty easy to throw, which is nice because I am not very good at throwing things. If you are involved in any kind of sport that involves things being thrown or caught, you do not want me on your team. But this thing's easy to throw and he adores it. He will play, I haven't hit a, good boy, good boy. I have yet to hit a point where he quits. Um, wanting to play. If I if I wait to throw it, he gets so wound up. You wanna jump? <laughs> That's another command. He'll jump up and just grab it um, very gently out of my hand. Good boy. We taught that because I want him to drop it. Good boy. I want him to not do that if he's not told to. Okay. Anyway, that toy so far seems pretty indestructible and I can just carry it in my backpack so I can have my hands free if I want. But then the rest of the time we're walking, we'll often play fetch the whole way as we go. And like I said, I haven't yet found a point where he will stop. Here, let's go out this way for fun. However far I throw it, he will get it. Now the snow's crustier, so it stays on top. Good baby. But for a while, the snow was really powdery, so everything I threw for him disappeared down into it, and he was still really good at finding it. Good baby. Good boy, let's go uphill. Let's go this way. Let's go this way. Good puppy. I love his little pounce at the end. Good job. And like I said, he will just do this over and over and over. So this is a reward as well. Really sit. Good boy. Good boy. Stay. Good stay. So he loves this so much that I don't have to use treats as a reward. I can also use fun things like being able to fetch as a reward. Good stay. Let's see how far away we can go. That's a good boy. Oh, you're listening so good. So good. Okay. Okay, good job, good baby. Bring it here, good boy. And he's really good at bringing it right back to me. He usually, as you may have noticed already, drops it right on my toes. Good boy, good baby. Yeah, because I'm not playing fetch, you are. Good puppy. If the ground's packed hard enough, he's still a little bit learning how to have coordination with his limbs as he grows. Um, he's kind of a teenage puppy right now. Bring it here. I can't throw it if you don't bring it here. Come on. Yeah, I'm not walking over there to get it. Good boy. Good baby. Such a good boy. And for a while, he would try to grab it out of my hand as I would pick it up. And when he did that, I would just freeze and tell him, uh-uh. And then, <laughs> now he doesn't know why I'm waiting. Um, and he would stop and got the idea not to try to snatch it from my hand as I was trying to pick it up, which is helpful. Okay. Even when it goes somewhere he can't see it, or I can't see it for that matter, he always finds it and brings it back. Good boy. And again, when I'm not recording, I just praise him the whole time and just uh, keep walking away 
And when he brings it back to my feet, we'll throw it again. Good boy. Oh boy. Oh, I like that. Look. Good puppy. Good puppy. So again, we're on about a six mile walk um, that I am walking slash running when the camera's not running. And he is obviously covering a lot more ground than that, aren't you? Yes, you are such a pretty boy. You are. You are. Here, let's go uphill. <laughs> Good boy. He gets all ready if he thinks he can tell where I'm gonna throw it. Good puppy. Good boy. Are you just the best mountain fetching dog in the world? The best snow puppy ever. Oh yes, you are. You are good boy. It's been deposited at my feet once again. There's one very excited puppy. So this is how we normally do this when I'm not recording. I throw it, he goes tearing after it, and I'm just walking in the other direction saying, good puppy. Braley is such a good fetching puppy. He can find anything in a snowdrift. Yes, he can. He sure can. Oh, look at that, it's back already. Good job. Good job. I don't know where I'm pointing the camera when I'm trying to throw. Good baby boy. So again, he knows he's doing the right thing the whole time from my tone of voice, whether I'm talking to you guys or actually talking to him. Good puppy. I can see him coming up beside me from his shadow before I can actually see him. Oh, good boy. Good boy. And ready to go for more. Yeah, that's one happy puppy. <laughs> I just love watching him fetch and all of his fluffy tail furs as he gets in his adult coat here. And he just loves to play. Good boy. Yes, you are. It's ahead. See, there he wasn't looking. Good boy, go ahead. This is why we've worked on our hand signals and, and voice commands. Go ahead. It's ahead. Good boy, good boy. Oh, you got it. Good job. Good job. Good puppy. I know another thing that gets talked about in dog training a lot is dominance. Okay, drop it. Good boy. Sit. Good puppy. Good puppy. Okay. Um, in my opinion, people are you know talk about being very concerned about if your dog walks in front of you or behind you, or eats before you or after you, or goes in and out of the door first or second or whatever. Um, I think, drop it, what oh boy. I think that those concerns, in my experience, have been a little um, just unnecessary. I'm obviously the dominant one in the relationship. The stick only gets thrown, or the toy, if I throw it. We only go out of the door if I open it, because he has not figured out how to turn doorknobs. Um, we eat when I feed him. I don't have a regular eating schedule myself, so it saying he eats before or after me is kind of just something that doesn't really have any meaning. Good boy. Good boy. We, uh sleep when I go to bed. I mean, he takes naps plenty of other times too, but we get in the loft and go to sleep when I go to bed. Otherwise, he doesn't. So, kind of by default, um, I am the person who just automatically kind of has to make those rules because a lot of them are things that he can't do. He can't decide to drive to town. That only happens if I drive to town and so on. So, um, I don't worry a whole lot about any of the other stuff. If I want to sit on the floor to work, this is a real example. I do this a lot. Good puppy. Oh, you smell something? Something else there that was interesting? Oh, good boy. What do you smell? If I want to sit on the floor to work and he wants to sleep on the couch, that's not him being dominant over me. That's him occupying the space I'm not occupying. <laughs> good boy. 
I will throw it. I know, I got distracted making a video for people who like to watch you. Anyway, that's how I view it, and it's it's worked well for me. Um, it, you know, again, I'm not a professional dog trainer. I don't know how to help you get rid of problems. Drop it. Good boy. Like... Uh, you know, dog-to-dog -dog aggression, um, you know, specifically between two, two female dogs who already have decided they hate each other. Um, that, as you probably know, became an issue with Grizzly when I tried to adopt her. Um, oh, I almost lost it over the bank. Good boy. Like I said, if we lose something, it's my throwing fault, not his. <laughs> Good boy. Why? Good puppy. Anyway, um, but I did work with three other separate professional trainers. None of them knew how to fix an issue like that either. Um, so there are some things that once they get developed are pretty hard to change. Um, you know, how to deal with female dog pairs, aggression toward each other, or the severe separation anxiety, like willing to hurt yourself and make yourself bleed to try to tear apart things. Um, and the extreme fear of people, you know, I don't know what originally caused all those for her, since I don't know her history, but... It could have been any of the above or a combination of, you know, poor, poor breeding choices, poor um, lack of training, poor training, very aggressive training or abuse um, that made her very scared of people and very timid and fearful and afraid to give any kind of warning but then lashing out. Um, anyway, I don't, some of those issues are just really tough once you have them and and that's really sad but in general I'm sure there's some exceptions maybe there are some dogs just born bad good boy not you not talking about you um but most puppies every puppy I have ever personally worked with has been born happy and wanting, you know, different personalities for sure. Some dogs are more reserved, some are more outgoing. Some love fetch, others don't, etc. But it's been born generally happy and wanting their people around them to be happy as well. And if you can start with a good foundation of just, you know, being fair to the dog and, and helping it understand what the expectations are then, then, uh, Usually, those other worst problems don't develop, but they can be very challenging once they are already embedded. So, yeah, I'm not a professional trainer, but I know, I got it, I got it. it it's, it, I know it bounces when you try to hand it to me, because it's long. Are you so hot? Do you need a break? Every time I think he needs a break, if I wait for a sec, he'll jump and try to get it on his own or start doing that because he just really wants me to throw it again. I know. Okay. Good boy. But yeah, you know, if you can give a dog a fair idea of what the expectations are from a little puppy, usually it works pretty well to make the dog and the people work together well. Good boy. You are the best puppy. Yes, you are. So we're getting toward the end of our walk most of the way back. Um, what you've seen us practice today has all been off-leash stuff, which is mostly how I have trained him, just because we have the ability to do that most of the time. And most of the time when I'm doing work, like shoveling snow or whatever else, having him on leash 
is not either very safe or convenient. Uh, in the past, I have not lived in a place where I had quite this much room to roam, and I have successfully taught all the exact same things on leash. I just haven't found them any harder to teach off leash, and we do practice walking on a leash some of the time. Um, to be sure that that's a, a skill he knows how to do politely, though we don't love practicing that mostly because I don't love practicing that mostly because I'd rather go for a walk like this off in the middle of nowhere and hopefully not encounter any other people and be able to have him running free to fetch toys and stuff. And so we do go into town every now and then and practice leash skills around other people and other dogs just to be sure he knows that, but that's not my favorite thing to do. And once again, I'm no kind of professional trainer. This is just my personal experience with the dogs I have raised over the years. And um, some of you guys have asked me a few times for tips on how I trained Burley and complimented him on his lovely good manners. And so I thought I'd just film some of what we do on our normal walk. And we do the same thing. Like I said, you know, in the middle of snow shoveling, we'll stop and practice a sit and high five and stay. In the middle of me making dinner, we'll practice a, you know, down or dance or other things. Um, so all these things are just part of our daily routine. It's just that I'm not always free to be holding a camera while doing all of those other things. So maybe that answers your questions a little bit, but really I think the, the more important thing than any particular what or how is just, it, it does help if there has been attention paid to breeding for sure and, you know, selection for um, particular traits depending, you know, those traits may differ depending why, why you have a dog and what you want them to do. But um, that helps, and then just, I'd say the general rule of thumb is whatever you want your dog to do, figure out a way that you can show them what you want them to do with some method that a dog can understand, not sitting down and writing them an essay to read, obviously, and they just be consistent and, and give the same command. I often use voice and hand commands, you may have noticed. So, I will say, oh, you found somebody else's poopy? Leave it. Good boy. Hey, Bradley, sit. Good boy. Good boy. Lay down. Lay down. Good boy. Go down. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. So, I use voice and hand commands like that. Um, dogs definitely pay attention to both, but with the goal of eventually, he should be able to do any of those things with solely hearing my voice or seeing my hands if he either cannot see or cannot hear me for some reason. So hopefully uh, y'all find that interesting. Seems to work for the two of us anyway. We really enjoy our time together and hardly ever end up in any kind of conflict that is frustrating or dangerous. So that's uh that's just the way we do it there's often more than one way to do thing like i said this is just my personal experience with my pretty puppy dog hope you guys all enjoy your days and may you have a lovely sunny one like we do Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.